Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our flow deep service and midweek service. I trust that your day has been good. And as you join us today from wherever locations you are, the glory of the Lord will rest upon you and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Our theme for this month of July is Stronger. And the same scripture is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And it says, Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles, they will run and not be weary, and they will walk and they will not faint. You will not faint. Even as you are coming out of the pandemic, as you are coming out of the lockdown, and we are going into the era of the new normal, God will give us grace and strength to overcome every challenges that is coming with this new normal in Jesus' name. Before we go to the study tonight, let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for your grace upon our lives. We thank you for bringing us again together to study at your feet. Father, we pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will descend upon us in our different locations. The blood of Jesus will cleanse and sanctify us and our locations so that your presence will be with us even tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that even as we are going to hear your word tonight, help your word to reshape us. Let your word remold us, blessed Holy Spirit, and let us come out as better people, ready to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yes, our topic for tonight is the power of consistent prayer. The power of consistent prayer. And you may want to ask ourselves, or we may want to ask ourselves, how much power does prayer really have? Or is prayer really powerful? Is prayer really effective? Yes, I say the answer is yes. The answer is that prayer truly has power. If we look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we discover that there is power in prayer. Impossible situations became possible clearly through the power of prayer. The dead was raised, Lazarus was raised by our Lord Jesus Christ through prayer. The walls of Jericho came down flat when the children of Israel did prayer work round the walls of Jericho, it came down flat. The prisoners were set loose, even Paul and Silas. It is through prayer. The blind received their sight. The barren became mother of children. And so many miracles were recorded in the Bible, all through prayers. So indeed, there is power in prayer. And now when the prayer becomes consistent, there will be more power in it. But sometimes we underestimate the power of prayer. Why? Because maybe we have not received immediate answers to our prayer. Or some of the things that we are believing God for, they are still not happening. They are still being delayed. And so we begin to maybe doubt, or maybe begin to worry, or we begin to ask ourselves, is prayer really powerful? Yes, prayer is powerful. Jesus prayed and resolved came out of all his prayers. Power, and there's power in prayer. And that is why Jesus said, he said in his word, in Matthew chapter three, he said he will anoint us with the Holy Ghost and with power. Why is that anoint us with the Holy Ghost and power? So that we'll be able to pray. So we'll be able to do the will of God. He said in the spirit of God that raised up Christ dwelleth in this which we quicken your mortal body. So Jesus Christ, our perfect example, prayed consistently, and then he got result in all of the prayers that he, he, he made. Jesus Christ is a perfect example. And as all as believers, we should be able to pattern our lives through Jesus Christ. He calls us to pray without ceasing. He wants us to pray endlessly. He wants us to pray effective and effectual prayer. And so we're going to take our, our text, the book of Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8. We'll take other scriptures as 
The discussion goes on by the help of the Holy Spirit. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And it was not for a while, but after what he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith in them? Shall he find faith in them? The verse that we have just read, verse 5 of that text makes us to understand that. He says that, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And verse 1 says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. What is making us faint? What is making us worry? What is making us matter? What is making us have matters that we can take before the judge of all the earth, which is God himself? It is things that are not right in our life. So when we talk about the power of consistent prayer, three words stand out there. Power is ability. The ability to do something. And by the grace of God, Jesus, God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit. He said that spirit is in us, and that power, that spirit will dwell with us. So we have power already inside of us, the power of the Holy Ghost. We were privileged to be part of the service on Sunday. Our General Basia spoke this exhaustively on the power of tongues and how it relates to prayer. And how through the power of prayer, praying in tongues, a lot of miracles was even done. And so power is the ability. And then when we talk about consistency, consistency is doing something in the same manner, you know, so that you can achieve accurate results. Doing something in the same manner so that you can achieve accurate results. And of course, prayer is we talking to God, bringing your petition to God, going to God in the place of thanksgiving, communicating with God, relating with God. So there is power in consistent prayer. Particularly when the believer or that person who has decided to follow Christ is. Because the Bible tells us in that first John chapter 4, verse 17, that as Jesus Christ is in this world, so we are. And Jesus Christ is our perfect example of somebody who prayed. Whatever situation that is before him, he prayed because he believed in the power of prayer. And that is why he said to us in that book of um, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, pray without ceasing. Romans 12, 12 says to us as well that we should pray. We should continue in prayer. So, Jesus himself also prayed. At every instant, whenever there are issues before him, he prayed and results are achieved. At the Mount of Transfiguration, in Luke chapter 9 and verse 28, Jesus also prayed. And so, in Mark, uh, Luke chapter 9 and verse 28, Jesus prayed at the, uh, the, the, the Mount of Transfiguration. And we can see that when he prayed, the glory of God came down upon him. Luke chapter 9 and verse 28. And it says, And it came to pass about an eight, at, at eight days after this saying, that he took Peter and John and James and went into a mountain to pray. So Jesus went to pray. And we read further down, we saw that in the process of prayer, 
the glory of God came down upon him. When he wanted to take a decision to pick his, his disciples, he also prayed. And of course, there was a, a effectiveness in the prayer. So prayer is the lifeline of Jesus Christ. And so prayer should be our own lifeline. The Bible tells us that in Leviticus, that the life of the flesh is in the blood. So for us believers, when we are not praying, the life that we have in us, which is the power of the Holy Ghost, that activates us to connect with God, the Almighty God, will not be activated. So prayer, lack of prayer, or lack of consistent prayer, might quench the power of God that is in us. And so we look at what we, want, what we can pick out from what we read in the book of um, Luke chapter 18 and verse, and Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Constant prayer is necessary for us. That is why he said, men ought to pray and not to faint. And we know that Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 tells us that if we faint in the day of advers adversity, our strength is small. So we are not encouraged to, uh, we, are, we are encouraged to pray. We are encouraged to pray. And the prayer should be consistent. So to accomplish God's will for us, for our lives, we don't need to faint. We don't need to fear. He said, fear not. For us to be able to accomplish the purpose and plan of God for our lives, we don't need to fear. It is in the place of prayer, powerful, consistent prayer, that the, uh, that, that, that the desires of God in our lives will be accomplished. We should take our trouble and our distresses to God through prayer. We must receive strength in the place of prayer. We must call upon the Lord confidently because you can see what happens here. The woman called upon the judge confidently and said, avenge me of my adversary. So also we are, we have ad 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 adversaries because we are in the world. But said, be of good share, I've overcome the world. So whatever adversaries that are there, in the place of persistent prayer, the adversaries will be brought down in the name of Jesus. And in the same way, he wants us to be consistent in prayer Ephesians 6, 18, ask us to also pray. First, now 5, 7, I said before, say we should pray. Colossians also want us to pray so that the power of the Holy Ghost will be activated in us and we'll be in constant communication and connection with our God and our maker. So do doing things in the same way will bring effective results for us. One of the things we also saw from the, the text that we read is that we have an adversary. We have an adversary, and that is like in verse 3. And that adversary, God himself will protect us from the adversary. He said, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together for us, they shall fall for our sake. God is promising us. Just the way God intervened in the life of this the parable that we just saw here, the way God intervened in the life of this woman, that is how God is going to intervene in our life. But are we going to do what the woman did? Continually, she was in the presence of the judge, asking for the Lord, for the judge to intervene. And the, the, Lord, the judge intervened. So when we are in such situation, we call God. Where anywhere there is injustice in our life, we also ask God to intervene in the place of prayer. There is power. There is power in prayer. And especially when that prayer is consistent. And so, we are going to look at an example of somebody in the Bible that her prayer was consistent. And because her prayer was consistent, she received the desired result that God, that she wanted from God. And that will take us to the book of 1 Samuel. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel. We're reading from 1 Samuel. 
I will see what happened to somebody who was consistent in, consistent in prayer and the power of God was proved in her life. Now, I read from verse 1. There was a certain man of Ramatazophia Ramat of, 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 of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jehoram, and the son of Enehu, the son of Jehu, the son of Zu, and an Ephratite. Verse 2 says that he has two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. That is what is making Hannah faint. That was a challenge, a challenge in marriage. That was a pain in marriage. But she knew what to do. And verse 3 says to us, And this man went out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the God, the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Penina, the priests of the Lord, were dead. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave Penina his wife and to all her sons and, Anna, and, and her daughters portion. But unto Anna, he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Anna, but the Lord had shut up her womb. The Lord shut up her womb. It's not by, not by herself. Not by doing, but the Lord shut up her womb. But look at what Anna did. And her adversary also provoked her so to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, he provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Verse 8 says, And then said the canna, a husband to her, Anna, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? And not I better to thee than ten sons? Depression had entered her life. Wherever the enemy wants to bring depression into our lives, because of a situation that is not out of our own making, the Lord will intervene and turn it around for good for us in Jesus' name. And so Anna rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh. And after they had drunk, and I like the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. She prayed unto the Lord. Verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and forget me and forget not thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then will I give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying on, on before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Anna, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy, put away thy wine from thee. And Anna answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have neither drunk, I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. That is prayer. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee the petition that thou had asked of me. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Whatever it is that is making our countenance to be sad. The God that put a smile in Anna's, Anna's face we put upon our faces in the name of Jesus. Verse 19 And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Anna his wife and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass when the time come about after, Anna had conceived, and she bore a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, 
because I asked him of the Lord. Anna was consistent in prayer. Even though she didn't have a child, year after year, she did not say, I'm not going to go to Shiloh. What do they go to do in Shiloh? In Shiloh is where they go to pray. And she went to Shiloh. She continued in prayer. She was consistent in prayer. She was doing the same thing so she could get effective results. So she should get effectual results. She was talking to the Lord in prayer. The power of consistent prayer. And what did we see? Anna's prayer was not, she wasn't asking out of any selfish desire. She was asking, look at what she said. So she told the Lord in verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the, on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but would give unto thy handmaid a man child, a man child, then will I give him unto thee, and all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. She wasn't asking for the child so she can boast back to her, her, her maid to say, yes, God has given him my own child. I said, no, God, give me the child. I will give him back to you. That child will be for your service. The motive of asking was very, very right. And we can see what that child became. That son, Samuel, the greatest, one of the greatest, but the greatest prophet, one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. And he was the judge of the nation of Israel. Anna asked rightly. So sometimes, that is why I say, you may be wondering and say, ah, does power, is there power in prayer? Yes, there is power in prayer. Especially when it's consistent. I don't know what trials you are having before you. I don't know what challenges you have been asking God. But if we remain consistent, just the way Anna did, the result will come. Our joy will be full. And the Lord's name will be glorified. Just to confirm that Anna's joy was full. You can see that, I said that when she prayed, and there was a conviction. The Bible records that her countenance was no more sad. And God blessed her. So much so that God even gave her more children. And if we look at chapter 2, of that first Samuel, we will see that Anna had a new song to sing. Anna had a new song to sing. The power of consistent prayer. The power of prayer broke the reproach of barrenness out of her life. And she became a joyful mother of children. And um, that's verse 2, that chapter 2 and verse 1 says, And Anna prayed and said, My heart rejoiced in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. There is power in consistent prayer. Power of prayer broke Anna's pain. Whatever pain that you and I have today, as we follow the example of Anna, as we do as she did, as we make sure that the request we are asking is in line with the perfect will and plan of God, the Lord will put a smile in our faces, and the Lord will also give us an occasion to sing a song of joy that will glorify his name. That is the power of consistent prayer. And so we discover that we need to pray effective and effectual prayer. We don't pray today and don't pray and then say we're not going to pray tomorrow just because we are not getting the answer. Let me also remind us that when we are not consistent in prayer, we are no longer in constant touch with God. Because he said we should come to him, we should be in his presence. When we detach ourselves without praying, we leave the edge around us open. We leave room for the devil to attack us. That's why Matthew chapter 13 and verse 25 says, say, why men slept? The enemies came to so sad. So that time we were not consistent. Anything can happen. It's, 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 it's a roaring lion. When you're about seeking who you may devour, you're looking for the unguarded hour of the believer. But by the grace of God, uh, you will not find any unguarded hour. 
Constant prayer block the edge. It protects us and block the enemy away from us. Because prayer brings down the presence of God. But they don't need to say, the minister will say, Father, in the name of Jesus, the heavens are ready. The host of, the host of angels are activated, waiting to go and bring our answers down, take our request to God and bring it down. The blood of Jesus is already speaking for us. So the presence of God comes down mightily. And we can see the example in our Lord Jesus Christ in that Luke chapter 9, verse 28. When it was at the Mount of Transfiguration, the glory of God came down upon him. So there is power in consistent prayer. And that is one of the things that we must need to do. So that as we continue to remain prayerful, there is no mountain that we cannot crush. It is in the place of prayer that we can bring down the plans of the enemy. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the, what, the rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness in high places. We wrestle them in the place of consistent prayer. So there is power in when we pray consistently. That is what the word of God makes us to understand. And so, we will now be asking ourselves, now that we have decided to be in the place of consistent prayer, are there things that are hindering us from not being consistent in prayer? I thank God for what is happening in our church even right now. We have what we call the GFA, the Global Family Altar. Every 8.45, every day, there's a call to prayer on our platform. You will come to that prayer, to that, to that platform. All families, husband, wife, children. And we pray for 15 minutes. That's consistency. Every day. But that does not replace your own family altar or your personal prayer. It just to enhance it. That's consistency. And as we continue to be consistent in the place of prayer, God will move to bring down everything that is not glorifying God in our lives. Because see, prayer, there is power in prayer. They say those that pray in the spirit, they get the victory in their physical. Prayer is spiritual. So every battle that we are going, that is, that is in our lives, we pray them down, we pull them down, we bring them down through prayer in the name of Jesus, back by the Holy Spirit. That is the power that God has given unto us. So, as I said again before, Jesus is our perfect example. If he prayed and got results out of consistency, as we saw the example of Anna, we ourselves also are also encouraged to pray. But I just want to quickly look at some of the things that is not making us pray and what we can quickly do to ensure that consistently we are in the place of prayer. I just talked about the global prayer altar that is that is being done by our church. That's one of the way. Consistency. You know, try and join that prayer thing. Now, what do you want to do so that you be consistent in your prayer? You want to ask God to help you. Ask God to help you through the help of the Holy Spirit. Ask God to help you. Make prayer your priority. Make prayer your priority. Let it be first. First thing in your heart. Say, prayer, I must pray. Holy Spirit, help me to pray. If I don't pray, I'm powerless, I'm defenseless. If I don't pray, I have not eaten. If I'm not eating, you will not have energy. If you don't have energy, if you don't have energy, you cannot do what all the things you want to do. So make it a priority. Ask for the grace of God. Let that grace be more than sufficient for us in Jesus' name. And then you want to want to have a prayer schedule. Have a prayer schedule. Because when you have a prayer schedule, it's okay. I'm going to take X and Y Z thing to the Lord in prayer. I pray for it in the morning. I pray for it in the afternoon. I pray for it in the evening. As the psalmist says in Psalm 55, verse 17, he says, in morning, noon, and night, will I pray? You will remember, you will know that I've prayed for one, I've not prayed for the other. So when you, when you check your prayer schedule, that will drive you to the place of prayer. And you remain consistent in the place of prayer. Oh, I prayed for the nation. I prayed for the, for the church. I prayed for the lost soul. But I've not prayed for the sick. So I'll take the prayer of the sick when I'm praying again. Oh, I've not interceded for the strangers in the land. Even, I've not even prayed for the people in authority. So when we have a prayer schedule, we are able to be there consistently in the place of prayer. One thing that we can, we can also do again is for us to be, it, to, to remain intimate. Yes, because it's, it's, it's Jesus Christ said, He is the vine and we are the branches. He that abided in him and he in him, the same will give forth much fruit. 
so that you can even be fruitful in the place of prayer. So these tips, you know, I just need to run through them because of our time, so that we know that we have looked at an example of somebody who was in the place of prayer. We saw what we read from the book of Luke chapter 18. She was consistent, she kept going to the judge, and by the end of the day, she got answered. So whatever it is that has not been answered yet, it will be answered in Jesus' name. Because he already said, he said, as we, before we begin to ask, God himself has already heard. So the things that will hinder us not to be consistent, maybe because we are already getting weary, oh, I've been praying, I have not, that one has not been answered, is it this one that has not been answered? Yes, it will be answered. He said, pray without season. Pray without season. Ask until you receive that which you are asking from God. So in order for us to see the things, that things change in our life, that the things, the ugly situations turn around to become beautiful. The way we saw in the life of Anna, we ourselves, we do what Anna did. I don't care what the situations are, but nothing is too difficult for God to do. He said if we believe all things are possible, if we believe all things are possible, and of course, we believe, and because we believe, all things will be possible in Jesus' name. You see the marital challenges, the Lord will bring it down as we go to him in prayer. You see the business that is failing, the power of the Holy Ghost will bring upon that business. You see the children are giving, that are giving stress. The Lord himself will remember that. He said, these ones have I found for myself. And he said, these, the children, they are inherited the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. He has promised that he will not give us any gift that will make us have sorrow. So as we bring all these situations that does not glorify God. Through consistent prayer, we will get the breakthrough in Jesus' name. And so, again, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 says, we ought to pray without ceasing. Let us look at what James chapter 5. Let's look at James chapter 5 and we quickly see what we need to do so that we have victory permanently in the place of prayer. There is power in consistent prayer. There's power in consistent prayer. And I read from James chapter 5, verse 13 to 18. Is any among you sick? Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. That is the key word. If you are merry, you are joyful. Pray so that God will continue to give you more joy to the glory of his name. More doors will be opened in the name of Jesus. Is anyone sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them do what? Pray over him consistently in prayer, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15 says, And the prayer of the faith, of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if, and if he hath committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. See, verse 17 tells us Elias, he was a man subject, he was a man subject to light passion, as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth a fruit. So that is the power of prayer. There is nothing that prayer cannot do. There is absolutely nothing that prayer cannot do. So prayer truly is powerful, and especially when it becomes consistent. And so that is why I leave us with this word of push. Pray until something happens. The Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. Let's bow down our heads in prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Wherever you are, in your room, in your, in your, wherever you are, just be in the mood of prayer. Now, say after me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I'm asking and praying that you fill me afresh with the power of the Holy Ghost. Say, oh Lord, fill me afresh with the power of the Holy Ghost to continue in the battle of faith and prayers in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord fill you afresh with the power of the Holy Ghost that you continue, you continue daily unto the battle of faith and prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Say thank you, Lord, because I know 
and every battle that is raging around me. As I go into the place of prayer, I crush them in the name of Jesus. I crush them with the blood of Jesus. I command them to give way in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, in Jesus' name we pray. We are going to pray finally by telling the Lord now that any power holding my benefits in this new month of July, what are you waiting for? Release it in Jesus' name. Any power from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, from within, wherever, release my benefits to me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. We know that indeed you will be glorified in our lives. Our joy shall be full, and your son's name will be glorified. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen.